Nights, episode 98. How crazy is that? We're two away from 100. The t-shirts are on the website, the new website. Uh, I mean, not the new website. The new, we're two from 100. See, I can do it. The new podcast t-shirts are on uh, the website if you guys want them. This time I didn't make any smalls because nobody buys the smalls. And now people are mad I didn't make smalls. Unless you're carrot top and you want to make every size in uh, 50 different items, I don't know how you please all the people all the time. Because otherwise we get stuck with it. And then I just donate it to charity. Yes. But then I got to talk to the guys to get the guys and what are we going to do? And then they bitch. We're holding these t-shirts in a warehouse. <laughs> how hard is it? Am I not paying for that? I think I am. Anyway, termites, welcome. So many things. What are we drinking? Topo Chico. It's a seltzer. I am, it's a hard seltzer. I'm not really a seltzer, hard seltzer person, but I've decided I'm going to be because it's a lot less filling than beer when it's this hot. So this is a little refreshing thing. I've tasted all of them. I'm going to keep trying. I have not tasted all of them, but I tasted a lot. Topo Chico is my favorite. Love exotic pineapple. (laughs) It tastes like... But then, I don't know, after three of these, I'm very sleepy. Beer, I could drink like five and not be sleepy. So, I don't know. <laughs> uh, what are our feelings on seltzers? They, they're not going away. Last summer, the summer before when they came out, I'm like, nah, like is this like a thing like, you know, there have been other Zima. There have been other fad. Zima. Well, it's a fad oh. drink. It came and it went. Yeah, that's like the 80s. I, no, it's, Zima's not the 80s. Yeah, it is. Bullshit. No, 90s. that's the 2000s. Giggle it. Zima. Ask the Ziggle machine when Zima came out. Bartles and James? Yeah, Bartles and James. Now, that was definitely 80s because I drank them in high school. They're so disgusting. Um, it, when, it was uh, 1993. 1993. All right, you win. <laughs> wow. But it went away. When did it, or maybe it's still out there. No, Is Zima still around? <laughs> no, it was. I thought seltzers were going to no. be the 2000s oh. version of Zima, and they're not going away. It, there's just more and more and more October in. October 2008. It ceased in 2008. But Japan kept it going until 2021. <laughs> Japan, wow, Japan kept it going until 2021. Yeah. They must have liked it. I mean, it was fine. Um, so I am a fan of the two, Topo Chico. The So far, it's my favorite. Then there's some that just taste like a can of actual grass in your yard. Yeah. Where they'll say it's such and such flavor. I'm like, no, that's so grass. Look, yeah, some of the Mick Ultra ones, and I don't, I like them. I'm going to try the Bud Light ones, and then I had an orange one at my friend's house, Mark's house, but it was good, but it tasted like orange soda, and then I thought, well, why wouldn't I just have an orange soda? Because there's no alcohol. Well, there's no alcohol in it, but I don't feel like I'm drinking an alcoholic drink. Point of the alcoholic drink is to feel like, hey, I worked really hard, and I got a treat. It's a right, party. right. <laughs> what are we trying? That's what we're drinking. Let's do it, Mark. At Mark's, it was his birthday, and I put a video on Instagram. Him and his wife, Nicole, I bought a blow-up. He loves golf, and they have a pool in the backyard. And I bought a blow-up golf cart. I didn't realize how big it was going to be as a pool float. <laughs> the and then in my mind, their pool was, was bigger than it is. I forget. And so I put it on top of my Mercury Mariner, if you'd like to see that. It's almost as big as my actual car. <laughs> put it in the show notes. Lay's, you know it's my favorite potato chip. They made Poppables Southwest Ranch. Just have a potato chip. I think these are supposed oh. to be, they're not good. No. No, and I love yeah. Lay's. I'm their biggest fan. I don't like them. They taste like they have chemicals. Come on. Right in the trash. Yeah. Okay. By the way, a termite anonymously, this just came from Amazon. It's a bomb pop float. No. What do, what do you call those in Canada paddles? Rocket pop. Rocket pop. Yeah. Well, welcome to America. <laughs> this is bomb pop. <laughs> and I'm going to blow the shit out of it, yeah. and my nephew will love it. Yeah. Um, all right, it's campfire time if you're not in the Midwest or the South. If you're somewhere fun, super like way up in Minnesota where I'm going to be going to my friend's lake. I don't remember the name of the lake. I'm going to Bemidji, mm-hmm. exactly. Google it. I've been to Minnesota <laughs> 7,000 times, and I've seen the license plate 10,000 lakes. I've never seen one lake. 
because so far they haven't made one in downtown Minneapolis, and that's mostly where I've been. Yeah, they couldn't have figured one in downtown Minneapolis. There's a lake in downtown Minneapolis? Yeah. Is it in the comedy club? <laughs> I don't think so. Is it in the bar I like? <laughs> Is it in the theater I work, the state theater? No. But I've moved on to Treasure Island Casino. I'm leaving downtown. Who's coming? Who's coming to Treasure Island? Yeah, yeah, it's Welsh, Minnesota. Yep. Whatever. Welsh. Welch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what did I say, Welsh? Yeah. Welch. It's like Welch's jelly. Maybe that's where they make Welch's jelly. Possibly. Our family favorite. So for those of you lucky to have um, campfires, because you won't burst into goddamn flames like we will here in Missouri or Tennessee... Texas. I don't know how Ron is sitting down there in Austin, and he still golfs. It's like 106. He's crazy. I know. And he'll go, you got to get out real early, Maddie. I'm like, yeah, but it's still 95 when you tee off. I'm. He's amazing. 65 years old. Still. So they now have Golden Graham S'mores Remix Snacking Mix. Let's say you're in an area where you can't have campfires or you'll implode and explode. California's really hot, too. Um... Vegas, where I'll be going August 5th, I think, for my show at the Mirage. Nice. It'll be a cool 110. Um, and my friend Carla Ray, who's on the radio out there, very funny stand up. She's gonna um open the show, oh, which fun. yeah, it'd be super fun. That's great. She's been on a morning show out there for a long time. It's your last time there. I know it's my last time there. It makes me very sad. I don't want to talk about it. It's gonna turn into the hard rock. Maybe the hard rock will they hire me in other places. I work hard rock on Orlando, you know. And maybe they can make it better. Okay. I say that reaching out to the hard rock people. Hello, I'm hard trying rock. to say, keep me on board. Um, these are Golden Graham S'mores Remix. There's little marshmallows in here. Let me taste a marshmallow. The graham crackers taste normal. Okay. Um, I don't know what these nuts are. Golden are oh, it's a Cocoa Puff. Oh, <laughs> They're great. Cocoa this Puffs. is a wonderful Nuts-ers. treat. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just eat the cocoa puffs and the crackers. Good. If you can't have a campfire, yeah, there's your next best thing. Yeah. Them. You got a campfire in a bag. Moving on. Mm-hmm. So, do you guys ever look at the food in Target and think, hmm, I don't know about all that? No. No? The, the produce? No. The produce? Yeah, produce? I don't know. I Sometimes it looks fine. And then I just don't really get there. Mostly I don't go to Target for food. But they're really getting into it now. They keep adding more aisles of stuff and stuff and stuff. So I bought their ranch dressing. It's called Market Pantry because isn't that what they call their their food area? I don't know what's going on at my Target, though, but it looks like it's been looted. I don't think they have enough employees. Like, there's just shit like the swimming suit department, the underwear department. But that, it looks worse than a child's room. That's really good. Yeah. Very normal. normal. Well, I'm just run of the mill. No, no frills. Old school ranch. Here's your salad at you know like one of those restaurants that <laughs> they use iceberg. I tried to use one of my nieces. I had romaine lettuce, and she goes, "Do you have real lettuce?" And she meant iceberg. <laughs> I'm like, "Listen, this family's trying to upgrade a little bit. I like iceberg like everybody else, but every once in a while we get a little something fancy. Do you have real lettuce?" I know. This is really good. I give them credit. Good, well done, Target. Well, it's super simple. No frills. This is what you would get like at a lake bar if you asked for a side salad. They're this is the ranch. They're also in Minneapolis. They are. Target's headquarters is in Minneapolis. I don't know if they made people come back to work downtown, but without the Target employees, it's a little spooky down there. A little ghost towny. Sort of apocalyptic. Mm-hmm. I saw a dude, and it wasn't even cold out. There's a lot of homeless people downtown. But he had on a, it was dirty though, but a red fur coat that went from his head all the way down to his ankles. And then underneath, he had a purple Speedo. Come on. That was it. And, I, <laughs> and he had a fly hat, like a super fly hat from the oh, 70s, like with a feather. Yeah. And I thought, God, even homeless, he put together a more spectacular outfit than I have on. <laughs> I mean, I, I got to give him credit. I double, double did a double take and went, whoa, whoa. But then I thought, how oh, he's so hot. But he's ready for summer if he takes that off. And then he's ready for winter. True. Right? Yeah. 
So you guys remember my friend um, in South Carolina, Alan? Yeah. <laughs> Adam. Sorry, Adam. Uh, well, he sent me, I haven't heard from him in a while, which is fine and dandy. Look at the Stevie shirt. He sent me this T-shirt. Oh, fabulous. Yes. It's so great. Look, at, yeah, I know you can't oh, see it if you're just listening, but it's a great T-shirt. So I got it. And he's the one who sent me the South Carolina Rocks glasses. And then to top it off, he sent me, because we're going to talk about the Alex Murdoch murders. I'm not going to tell you. You should always go listen to, to, to Manny Matney's podcast if you want really to get into it. I'm just the dumb man's version to catch you up in case you don't have time for all that. Uh, but he sent me the Greenville News murder nice. charges pending for, yeah, he sent me the whole newspaper. And I'm like, I think he's a young person. And I'm like, this is a very Lewis Black thing to do. Grandpa, <laughs> Papa Lou will send me articles like in the mail, yeah. like from the New York Times. I'm like, hmm, still yeah. sending articles. But I like it because this is actual local and I care more about. Uh, That's how you like to get your newspaper. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I do. I was so sad they canceled USA Today's in hotels. So sad. But guess who brought it back? Marriott Courtyards. No way. Yep. Cool. Because they put what sports are on TV right in that category, and then I don't have to Google all that shit. And I liked their um, entertainment section. Um, for a, Anyway. I mean, yes, I could go online and look at USA Today. I know that. But it's not the same. Right. It's just not. No, no, matter hands, what, no matter what people try to tell you. Speaking of Stevie Nicks, Queen News. How did I not know about any of this? Stevie Nicks is now the star of this new comic book. Here's what fans should know. Oh my God. Right. It's been three years since Stevie Nicks became the first woman to be inducted to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame on two separate occasions, taking her place in the Hall of Fame and the Hall of Strength of her solo in, and after being enshrined as part of Fleetwood Mac in 1998. I also think Tina Turner should have been, if she hasn't been, both for Ike and Tina yeah, yeah. and for Tina. And Ann Wilson, I want to say, of heart for, but I don't know if Ann's done enough on her own. Like Stevie did Belladonna and all that. Yeah. I don't know. I just rewatched Ann Wilson because I saw it on TikTok. But I watched the whole deal. Ann Wilson singing Stairway to Heaven at the uh, Lincoln Center, Kennedy Center Award deal. And all the Led Zeppelin guys were watching. I mean, I dare to say she's better than him. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty bad. It's, it's really, I mean... I don't know that you can top. Like, Stevie's voice is weird, and it's Stevie, and she's my favorite, but it's no Ann Wilson. I mean, her stairway to heaven. Robert Plant was crying, and I thought, probably because you know she's singing it better. <laughs> I mean, that was ju it's just mind-blowing. And then there's, there's like, half of the Lincoln Center people are very uptight. Like, they're there for the cello award winner, and I'm sure they were like, what the fuck's going on here? <laughs> she did a couple, yeah. A year after Nix's induction into it as a solo act, the biggest hit she wrote and sang for Fleetwood Mac experienced an odd tit resurgence when a TikTok video of Nathan, uh, somebody, chugging ocean spray. We all saw that one. Um, now she's got her own comic book. Not exactly on the level of Hall of Fame induction, one could argue, but it does speak volumes to the Phoenix-born icon's enduring appeal on the impact on culture. She already had her own coloring book. Why did I not know that? Yeah. But wait, listen to this. So it's called Tidal Wave Comics. Okay. There, here's who they have, um, female force, a series of biography, um, biography, all these comics, the magazines. Here's who they already have. Okay. Dolly Parton, right. present and accounted for. Oh. Donna Summer, loved Donna. I don't have a thing. Tina, loved Tina. Betty White, one of our candles right here. Michelle Obama, I don't have a candle for her. Barbara Streisand, Cher, present and accounted for Cher. back here. Mm -hmm. And Gloria Steinem, they all have their own comic book already. It's called Tidal Wave Comics. Um, they're, it's a, wait. It's a 22-page comic book written by Michael Frizzell with art by Ramon Salas. It's available digitally. Oh, oh right. Oh, uh, Google Play, iTunes, Kindle, and in print. You got to get the real one. You can't watch it. You don't want to see it digitally. The yeah, wow. so Dollar I'm going to go find those. Well, they did one on Zelensky. On Zelensky? Mm -hmm. I thought it was supposed. To, well, no, but he. This is just the female forces category. Right. This is not. This is all just title. I met Gloria Steinem once, um, at a benefit in New York, 
at yep. Caroline's at the Comedy Club. Oh. Yes, and Martina Navratilova was there too. Wow. And in the 70s, my whole family watched a lot of tennis, and I was on Martina's side because I thought Chrissy Everett was boring. She only hit from the... Oh, and I watched that. There's a special. It's about Martina. It's like, it's not a 30 for 30. It's an ESPN 60. ESPN 60, was that it for yeah, sure? I think so. I don't remember. It was good. I wish they would have paid for more footage of the matches. They had some footage. I didn't watch it. Um, if you watch it, like, I don't know, Chrissy Everett's game was just all baseline, boring. And I'm like, how come not everybody's not rooting for this lady who had a runaway from Czechoslovakia? I mean, she had a runaway from her government, and she's here playing tennis. She has to concentrate on the fact she's defecting from a communist nation and still try to play tennis. I'm going to root for that lady. But I was in the minority, I think. But anyway, it's Gloria. The greatest rivalry in sport. The greatest rivalry in sport. Yeah. What's it on? ESPN. ESPN. It's, an ESPN it's pretty interesting. Yeah, I'll put it the show notes. But even when I see the two of them together, I'm like, man, I like Martina better. Yeah. She's more casual. Yeah. Chrissy's intense. But I guess you got to be kind of intense to make it to that level, which is why I'm not at that level. She's a narcissist in sports. Mm. Don't go that far. Gloria Steinem, however. <laughs> It was a benefit for some women's deal. I don't I don't even know. I just remember this was so funny. And this is like, don't blame me for this. So Sherry Shepard was backstage, and I get along with Sherry fine. And Joy Behar was there. It was just a lot of women, comedi- comics or hosts or personalities or whatever. I don't even know what the deal was for. I was just impressed that Martina Navratilova was there and Gloria Steinem was there. Oh, and... Oh, she died. Linda Ellerby, who's passed away, oh, the journalist. Wow. Yeah. yeah, and I loved her. Cool. Um, and I, Molly Ivins might have been there, too. It was a big shindig. The lady, Caroline, who owns Caroline's in New York, the comedy club right in Times Square, she knows a lot of people. And when she calls and says you should come do, do tells you to do something, you just do it. Yeah. But it's always fun, and the drinks are free. So whatever, I showed up. And uh, <laughs> Sherry Shepard had said on The View that week, that she thought the world was flat. She was sure of that. Okay. So I'll, it's a tiny little green room at Caroline's. Extremely tiny. Like maybe five adults could maybe sit in there. Maybe. Mm-hmm. And Sherry was <laughs> back there. And I go, hey, I don't really watch The View all the time. But did you really say the the earth, the earth is flat? Mm-hmm. And she goes, yeah. I said, oh, oh all right, cool. So she left and I'm cool. sick. <coughs> well, I can't really argue it. I don't know enough about science. I just know that's probably not right. And I said to Joy, I go, does she really believe that? Or is that like to take a different side just for the fun of it? She goes, no, she reads the Bible a lot. And she left. I go, what the fuck does that mean? There's all kinds of people that read the Bible that don't believe the earth is flat. I'm like, that is not a, a catch-all phrase, Joy. And Joy just laughed and walked away. And then Sherry didn't hear any, but I wouldn't have cared if she did. I like, I get along with her just fine. But anyway, that's enough of work talk and chitter-chatter. Title uh, Tidal Wave Comics. Okay, update! I don't have any other Queen news. Nobody's really doing nothing out of the ordinary. Tanya's out there hitting it hard. Summer festivals. By the way, did you guys see the clip of the Kid Rock concert? Now, I know everybody has opinions about him, and I understand them all. I went to Iraq and Afghanistan with him. We were gone almost three weeks, and he was nothing but lovely. So I, and I see him at my golf course all the time. So I can't, I'm not going to say bad mouth Kid Rock. But Bobby is his real name, and he did grow up in Michigan with a lot of money. So I don't really understand this persona thing. The anti <laughs> Like, if you grew up in bumfuck, Smoky Mountains, Gatlinburg, and you come parading into Nashville with your Confederate flag, maybe you haven't heard that you all lost and shit. Maybe you don't know because you're living in the sticks and stuff. But he, whatever the case, um, he had a concert in North Dakota this was, yeah. And uh, first of all, there was 18,000 people at this outdoor shindig in North Dakota. And he said, so the opening act played for two and a half hours. And that opening act was Night Ranger. <laughs> oh, my God. I would have killed myself 
How do you let Night Ranger do two and a half hours? Unless they're doing other people's songs. I don't even remember what they did sing. Giggle it, Paddles. What did Night Ranger sing? It's an 80s person, right? I know the band is from the 80s or maybe the, ni- ni- I don't know, 90s? What did they sing? Mm. <laughs> Two and a half hours at Night Ranger. Wow. You'd have to literally pay me a lot. Oh, my God. Sister Christian. Oh, Sister Christian. Oh, yeah. 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 We won't have when to pay any money because I don't really sing, so that didn't count as singing. When you close your eyes. When you close your eyes. No, I don't think that's them. No? I don't think it's a different song. Maybe Christian. you just don't. You yeah. don't yeah. Well, <laughs> Midnight Madness. Well, anyway, so these people wow. sat through. The most Google thing is, isn't that major a one-hit uh, wonder? <laughs> are they a one-hit wonder? Um, so these 18,000 people, uh, you can see the video online. It was on TMZ. Um, they got suffered through two and a half hours of Night Ranger. Now, everyone should be given $100 right at that point and an apology. <laughs> Just $100 cash. If I was Kid Rock, I'd walk out with a bucket of money and go, I'm sorry, they went too long. I'm sorry, I told them to do 35 minutes. God damn it, I don't know what went wrong. They wanted Rock in America. And maybe they're friends, who knows. But even my best friends, if they were, no. I'm putting a time limit on you, and you can put one on me. I don't care. Um, But anyway, then the guy comes out, and it was a little windy, and there was a storm somewhere, but it seemed that it had passed. Yep. And they didn't get off stage till like 11. And Kid Rock was supposed to start then. And he canceled. <gasps> a security person came out and said the show was canceled due to high winds. And uh, forget about whether or not. I mean, that seemed to be true. I don't know. Go watch the video. The, 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 the 18,000 people went crazy. They're throwing cans at the stage. One guy jumped up on the stage and he got like in a, like a fighting stance with a security person. <laughs> but it's always the guys that are totally out of shape that are like, I'm doing it, man. And his friends threw his fat ass up on the stage and then he gets like in his karate kid deal and then boom, took him right down. And I thought, what a night. Because how, how long is it going to be till Kid Rock comes back till that ticket's good again? If you're a Kid Rock person, yeah. it's a bad night. Bad night for you. <sighs> You're, well, you're still in North Dakota, but it depends on where you're going to go. Use There's nice places in North Dakota, but how far was your car parked? Right. North Dakota. Yeah. Update! Wow. Okay, remember, there were two Cobras loose this year. One was in Grand Prairie, Texas, and the other was in Raleigh. Shocking. We have an apology from the Raleigh Zebra Cobra owner. I think we should hear it. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to hear it. All right. The owner of a deadly cobra that escaped in, nor- in a North Raleigh neighborhood last summer is speaking out for the first time since he was hit more than, with more than 50, 40 misdemeanor charges. 40. Chris Gilford, Chris Gifford, now 22, a TikTok famous snake handler, was forced to surrender more than 75 of his reptiles and pay hefty fines as North Raleigh collectively held their breaths while authorities searched for the deadly spitting snake. One just any... Regular cobra, I mean, I think they all spit. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> the days long frenzy after the ended after the cobra was spotted on the front porch of a community off Leesville Road. So some lady went out and there's a guy flipping cobra. <sighs> to know that an animal you were supposed to take responsibility of and due to your mistake and not making a call is uh, is out. I wish I was I was in tears, he said. What I learned is you make the call. You keep yourself accountable, which I didn't do. Okay. Here's the thing, though. I have a tough time. I'm not, if somebody's going to apologize for something, there needs to be an action accompanied with it, or I find it worthless. Agreed. I think his action should be, I will not do this anymore. I will not be on TikTok with these venomous animals that are living in the basement you know, that means, okay, you're really sorry. Right. Just going, I'm sorry, but as soon as I'm out of trouble, I'm going to order a bunch more and get back <laughs> on TikTok because I was making like 50 grand an hour showing you my snakes. 
Maybe he'll do that. I don't know. Here's the rest of it. Guilford pleaded guilty in court to not alerting authorities when his African zebra cobra escaped from its confinement in November of 2020. That meant it was loose for months without the community's knowledge. Months. It's the one in Texas where the kid goes, well, I think it's dead. (laughs) How do you know? What if it found a bunch of mice? It could eat them and be... So this thing lived for months. So this whole bullshit, and it was cold in it was cold in North Carolina then. So it, he thought it would die because it wasn't hot enough. You don't even know enough about your snake. No. Before temporarily temporarily deleting his account during the zebra cobra frenzy in the summer of 2020, he boasted nearly half a million followers on TikTok. His account is now back up. See, with 535,000 followers and nearly seven million cumulative likes. According to TikTok, Gifford said he decided to speak with investigators not to change minds about the ownership of the venomous snakes, to, to, but to explain to the community why he didn't report the escape. Yeah. I was young and terrified. Understood. And that's why you shouldn't have an African spitting cobra, because you're young, not smart in this area, and terrified. Mm-hmm. None of that works with a no. poisonous animal, an aggressive one at that, too. It's not like a... I don't know, like a spider will just go hide. Yeah. You know? I was young and terrified. He purchased two African zebra cobras in November 2020 to add to his collection of snakes. These guys were eight, nine inches long. Really small guys. Which, here's what I do know for sure about rattlesnakes. I don't know if it holds true with these other snakes. Because I had to do a rattlesnake roundup for ESPN2 and it was terrifying. Little rattlesnakes have just as much venom, if not more, because it's more compressed than a big one. People think, oh, it's a little guy who cares if it bites me. <laughs> Care. just yeah. a, That's my public service yeah. announcement. Care. He put them in separate temporary enclosures as part of standard quarantine process so they wouldn't spread disease to other snakes. But he said that didn't last long. When he came back the next morning to check on the enclosures where the other deadly snakes were, one was missing. This, just this giant, oh, crap moment, he said. After a quick search, he noticed that one container wasn't latched close wasn't latched closed properly. This is something I should have a hundred percent full blown checked. The lid. The lid. Yeah. The gate. Yeah. <laughs> Gifford said that's when panic took over. Mm-hmm. Immediately, just frantically searching, changing everything, checking everything and everywhere. He was confident that the snake was somewhere in his parents' basement. Oh boy. He's twenty two, and he's living in his parents' basement, and they're allowing this. Mm-hmm. If you're this successful on TikTok, at least go get your own. Tiny house. Yeah. yeah. Probably not apartment. You can't do all this. Well, who knows what people are doing. There was a person in the valley in Los Angeles that had a panther. I mean, people do crazy shit. Panther? Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. Well, I used to do a joke. That's because nobody in L.A., nobody, most people's families aren't there. So you can have whatever you want because your mom's not coming over. Like, if I had a panther and I wasn't telling people, right. especially my mom, and then my mom says, oh, I'm going to swing by. I bought some stuff for your kitchen. I'd be like, fuck, hide the panther. Oh, my God. My mom's coming. Yeah, but in L.A., people are just out there doing whatever. Anyway, he said he was confident the snake was somewhere in his parents' basement because of the safety measures he and his father put in place. So the dad's in on this. They closed off any entrance or hole they could find using wired grates and foam sealant. Those safety measures were required by his parents when he started collecting venomous snakes. They're living upstairs. Wow, come on. Oh, we had to foolproof that room first for me to have everything, he said. After Giffen and his father removed every th- enclosure from the basement, they found a small hole in the wall the size of a pen that was previously used to have Ethernet cable running through it. This hole was never sealed off. That hole went into the crawl space and into the drywall. <laughs> if anything, that was a sign of relief because that thing's not going anywhere. It's still in the house. No, not if it got in the drywall. With little comfort knowing a venomous spitting cobra was loose in his home, the Giffords took more steps. At this point, we had bombed the basement with chemicals, set up cameras. That's when the discussion came up about reporting it. He said him and his parents decided they didn't need to report the cobra because the cobra was native to Africa, and they believed it wouldn't survive in North Carolina's cold temperature. Wrong. (laughs) I was scared, he admitted. I convinced them that I didn't think we need to make this call. Well, I understand you're scared. Should be. And the parents should be held accountable. I agree. Yeah. Uh, January snowfall and 50 nights 
or below a freezing of the next couple of months to ease the anxiety. So they thought they were in the clear. They thought it died. Yep. Then June came around and animal control came to visit. Gifford thought this was a routine check on his snakes and he had no reason to believe they were looking for the cobra that had escaped months earlier. The officer searched his home and revealed the real reason for the visit. The lady, the uh, officer person, animal control, pulls out her phone and lo and behold, it's a picture for sure. It's the zebra spitting cobra, which has now grown about five to eight inches. Oh so it's that long. Oh my God. A, <laughs> mm-hmm. She said, this was found about three streets over. Is this snake yours? He said, out of fear, he lied to her. He oh. said he didn't know whose snake it was. No, it's not my cobra. <laughs> you know, I don't know how many people in this neighborhood have cobras. Yeah. Why are you just all up my grill? Have you <laughs> asked everybody on the street, any chance you own an African spitting zebra cobra? In hmm? North Carolina. In North Carolina. I was petrified. I didn't know what to do. I was scared. I didn't know what the precautions would be like. Would be, and none of this was an excuse. Immediately, I said, I have no idea. Soon after she left, hold on, his conscience took over. I needed to take the heat for this. I messed up big time, he recalled feeling. I immediately called her. She came back to the house, and I gave her the full story. He was ordered to turn over $35,000 worth of snakes to the county. He would pay $13,000 in restitution for, among other things, uh, the police and the EMS response to capture the loose snakes. The snakes would be used for cancer research and anti-venom development. He's also promised to not own any snakes for a year. As a result of the community-wide panic, the Raleigh, the city of Raleigh instituted a new dangerous animal ordinance aimed at stopping ownership. Yes! Yes. Not where people live. No. You can do this shit if you have 50 acres out in the middle of nowhere. No, you can't. Well, you can. No. Not, not when you're 22. Not when you're 22. No. Well, here's the thing. You want him to pay 13 grand back, he needs the snakes back to get back on TikTok. <laughs> How's he going to pay you? You cut off his money. <laughs> Reflecting on what happened, he said it was understand. He understands it was a small price. I mean, at least he did it. There's a lot of kids that wouldn't no, do any I of this. <laughs> it was on a lady's porch, he said. Imagine if a little kid or something of that nature had happened. Right. Yeah. This can kill people. Most likely will kill you. Right. <sighs> He's just apologizing. Well, that's his court-imposed um, ban on owning snake expires in August. He says he does plan to get, plan to get back into snake ownership at some point, but not at his parents' house. So it sounds like maybe his parents were like, okay, listen, TikTok, schmick schmack. We're not doing that again. One would hope. Yeah, I just don't understand why we... Yeah. Mm. Update. This is my favorite story of all week. Really? Yep. Huh. I think it is so incredibly exciting. Well, but I'm a dork about things like this. Should have had a better update, though. I, I need... Update, yeah. No. It's a good update. Okay. You know I'm obsessed with the... Um, yachts. The yachts. Oh, God. Well, the one that we captured in Fiji, and then we took it to San Diego, and the FBI agents... Oh. Stop, battles. This is going to be a good one. The FBI agents went in to seize the contents. Remember that commercial? I forget what it was for, where the guy, the, they, it was basically a Russian oligarch, and he had, like, the tiny giraffes. Like, yeah. the, really? The, no, it wasn't that long ago. Tiny giraffe? Yeah, they were just showing the opulence of, I forget what it was about, but he had tiny giraffes. And, um, so... A possible, possible, but they're pretty sure, Fabergé egg was seized on the yacht. No way! No, I have Googled okay. the shit out of this. Yep, There's right. only 47 left in the world, somewhere right around there. Wow. There's a few that are missing forever. Well, who knows? Somebody has them. Or they got broken or looted or whatever. My first thought was, <clears throat> if I, they're all worth low end 10 to 15 million. Don't ask me why Virginia, Richmond, Virginia, the art museum there, has more than any place in the United States. What? Yeah, I don't know. There's like four or five eggs there. There's only one in New York, one in D.C. Most out. of them are in Moscow. We gotta find out. There's some guy, Victor Vezkloff. He owns like a lot of eggs. and he, But he put them in a museum at least. But what are the odds I'm ever getting to Moscow? Zero. So next time I work Richmond, I've never seen one. 
I mean, it's amazing. Go. But then I thought, if I was on a ship, a yacht, and I had an egg, every time we hit a wave, I'd be like, oh, fuck, <laughs> the egg. You said it, so you said it's really locked down good, but I don't, that was a big wave. Yeah, there goes your little egg, like, <laughs> so this is crazy. One of the few remaining in the world has been recovered um, from a Russian oligarch super yacht siege in Fiji last month. Speaking of da 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 da, interest, interesting discoveries, discoveries, although they did not specify which yacht was found to contain the Fabergé artifact, she did say the vessel had come from Fiji and was docked in San Diego. In late, in late June, federal law enforcement sailed Suleiman and Karamal of $325 million called, um, yacht called Amida from Fiji to the U.S., a 5,000 mile journey. Oh, how much did that cost in gas? Following a projected court battle hinging on the question of ownership of the vessel. Um, That's awesome. The House of Fabergé, they're out of Moscow. They're the ones because one of the czars said he wanted an egg for his wife for Easter. And they're like, I don't know, they're a version of Tiffany, but fancier. Jewels, lots of jewels. Mm -hmm. So they made a beautiful egg, and then they were, he really liked it. It was super popular. And then they're like, hey, why don't we get an egg business? <laughs> <laughs> like, it doesn't have to be just for, it's not just for Easter. Not just for Easter. Um, it's for your house. Um, but then they stopped making them like in 1915 or something. Yeah. St. Petersburg. That's where they were making them. Um this is more about the ship. Oh, wow. Um, Monaco said the possible Fabergé egg recovered from the yacht, if genuine, would make it one of the few of the remaining in the world and worth millions of dollars. House of Fabergé um, began creating their iconic eggs 180 years ago in St. Petersburg, where they rose to prominence as jewelers of the country's money nobility. In 18... Oh, here's the thing about... He gave it to his wife, Tsar Alexander III. He commissioned the first egg as an Easter gift for his wife, Empress Maria Federnova. He, so they cool. created 50 for the imperial family over the next 30 years. That's crazy if this guy had one. And I want to see it. Whose yacht is it? Well, they're not really identifying it, but that guy that I said, Suleiman, well, no, nah, I made that up. Yeah, Suleiman Karamov. The the, that's the one they towed, or drove 5,000 miles, <laughs> towed it. <laughs> hey, buddy, remember that yacht you had? <laughs> uh. <laughs> no, they drove it 5,000 miles, but imagine the gas. That's crazy. So I did, just because I was interested, um... Uh, I wanted to show, tell you exactly how many were left. Oh, I had the list of eggs off. Uh, yeah, it's too boring. But um, if you go on Wikipedia, there's like 47 left. You, you, in the or go to the schnotes. Yep. And uh, you can see the ones that are out there. None of them look alike. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's the really one cool. thing mm -hmm. out of all this stuff we've talked about on this podcast that People buy at auctions a dinosaur skeleton, or here's Al Capone's wallet, or like I don't understand any of that. But if I had a Fabergé egg That's every awesome. day, I would wake up and stare at it while I drank coffee and went, "That is <laughs> insane." It would give me a lot of pleasure as a piece of art, but I would feel terrible hoarding it. <laughs> like I'm the only person who gets to see this every morning. I would have to put it in a museum close to my house, That's at awesome. least. Um, Update. Oh, who do we on this pod, podcast not like besides Mark Zuckerberg? We don't like Adam Newman from WeWork. No, Did you guys like watch WeWork? We all talked about this many, many times. I don't need to. You'll see. Here's what's weird. You still see WeWork buildings. It continued on without him. They must be making money. Uh -huh. Sorry, I was driving. They're still doing things. Um, His new project. Disgraced former WeWork CEO Adam Newman's newest project has been halted by the re recent crypto crash. <laughs> Which, by the way, let me check on that. Okay. It's way down. Yeah. But. Buy the dip. But it's not. Yeah, buy the dip! <laughs> <laughs> I'm not putting any more money into this, but. It's fine. It's the exact amount I put in. It's even Steven. So. Even Steven, come on. Whatever you put in, you're even. You want out? You want out? 
You want your you want your initial investment? Get out now. You want to keep the run running? Stay. I'm staying because I only put enough in that I won't care if it goes away. Because I do believe it's a Ponzi scheme. Um, his latest venture called Flow Carbon was co was co-founded by Newman. Every time they say co-founded by Newman, I know someone else thought of it. Right. And then he was like, I will be the man to go get you more the money. Just two years after he was ousted from his shared office space company for taking it to the bank of ba- brink of bankruptcy. The firm is a small group. He's trying to, it's trying to offset a metric ton of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases, which that's a fine thing. Cause I do feel like climate global warming is happening. I don't know why. And we're all just sitting around going, it's fucking hot. <laughs> what am I supposed to do about it? Recycle your peachy bottle. Okay. I mean, it's so out of the normal person's control. We're just sitting here watching it burn. Um, flow carbon, however, streamlines the process with a network or blockchain that allows individuals to purchase crypto tokens in lieu of the permits, which are finite and finite in number and typically purchased through brokers. I don't even understand the rest of this business, but I'm glad that Adam has again hit a roadblock. Yep. I'm not glad that Bitcoin has crashed. It didn't crash. It tumbled. Yeah. There's a difference. I've tumbled down stairways. <laughs> I've never crashed. There's a difference. Um, update! Netflix has changed its strategy. Wow, just in one week. <laughs> in one week. Well, their earnings report came out, and their stock actually went up because it's not as bad as predicted. They said they would lose $2 million um, subscribers, and they only lost one. Oh. So everybody's like, whoa, well that's so great. <laughs> um, Netflix is trying a new approach to marketing its next big film, and here's their new idea, to tell people it's coming out. Boy, 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 boy. Wow. The streaming service is orchestrating one of the biggest promotional pushes ever ahead of the July 22 streaming debut of The Gray Man, a spy thriller starring Ryan Gosling. I don't really get that guy, but it's fine. He's a Canadian? Yeah, we love him. All right. I just don't, I don't know. Wait. But I don't like these kind of movies. A spy thriller. I've never seen a James Bond in my life. I never intend to. I just don't care. But I know everybody cares. I know there's a lot of people that care. You should start with a little bit of that. I've seen Rocky 7,000 times, and I think that makes up for it. Um. And the sound of music, seven hundred fifty million. Uh, so they're going to have a campaign of billboards in several cities, as well as TV advertising spots during major sporting events. Here's the thing: everybody who has Netflix, we go to the first page, <coughs> and it says "new on Netflix." If it's good, whatever it is, like everybody has told me a million things about Stranger Things, I just haven't had time to go get involved. And the premise sounds a little wacky for me. For me. I pref- I'm watching McMillions, and I'm really late to that party, but I do love it. I had no idea. That's a separate topic. But anyway, spending all this money on billboards. Here's the other thing L.A. was famous for doing. Because I would drive up and down Sunset. When when you live there, that's going to be where you're at a lot. You have to be for, to get to play workplaces and shit. Giant billboards all over the place of what's coming. It, that needs to be in Omaha. Right. Not in L.A. You made it, Jack Straws. You know it. Everybody we know probably worked on the worked fucking on movie. It. Like, it's so stupid <laughs> so. to advertise to the group who made the product. Yeah. I never understood that. And then they'll do it in New York. It's vanity stuff. It is a waste. Of, it's vanity money. New York. Mm-hmm. Okay, maybe you put one in Times Square because there's a lot of people not from New York running mm-hmm. around Times Square that might see it. But my whole point is you go on Netflix, it says new stuff. I will watch the new stuff based on what everybody's told me to watch. Right. Word of mouth. Totally. And a billboard isn't going to trick me. <laughs> if anything, have the ads pop up on my phone when all these other ads pop up that I didn't ask for. Mm-hmm. A billboard. How old school. <laughs> Why don't you put it on the, um, see if the Goodyear float will let you rent out that side of it. <laughs> Jesus Sorry. Christ. So they spent more than two billion last year on marketing, but it never invested as much as its peers in Hollywood. It saves money by not spending so much on the marketing front, which would cost billions of dollars. Well, you have to market a movie with billboards and stuff because people want to know what's at the movies. They they're not just they look at it on their phone, but 
the, the movie listings, but you don't know what it's. Right. Yeah, right. it's a different animal. Um, they're going to spend $200 million on this. Wow. Yeah. I mean, if it's a good movie, people will know. Yeah. Which, speaking of, what if I've been watching Millions, and I know I'm late to that. My brother's like, Kathleen, everybody watched it a long time ago. I'm like, oh, well, I didn't know about it. And at first I was like, this is kind of slow. But boy, does it get wacky good. What's it about? Um, remember that game, McMillions, where you, it was a game, Monopoly, that you could win McMillions of dollars? They're playing Monopoly, so there's oh, game pieces. It was like on your, at McDonald's, yeah. like on your sodas. and. Yeah. But I know for a fact, because my sister worked at the uh, lottery for a while, the government really does. Uh, they regulate all of that to the bone, to the T, mm-hmm. because it's a government deal. But I always wondered, like, with those fast food games, who's does anybody really win? I'm 56. I've never known anybody that won anything. Right. Do you? No. From a, a game? No. Like a free soda or some bullshit. Yeah. But not like lottery tickets. I know I've lives. seen my brother win $500 on a scratch-off. My mom's won $500 on a scratch-off. The lady that I used to wait tables with, Patty, Patty won the five out of six Numbers in the Missouri lottery like four times. What? Yeah, it wasn't a lot. I mean, it was like fifty eight hundred bucks, forty eight, just the Missouri lottery. Well, cool. uh, forty two hundred bucks. Yeah, off of I think it was a two dollar ticket at the time, maybe a dollar. I don't know. Anyway, I do know lottery winners. I don't know anybody that's won from these promotional fast food games. And then I thought, if I'm McDonald's, if you want to weave your way around the bullshit, if you want to lie about it, uh, you just tell the government. Well, we put five pieces out there. Maybe somebody threw them out. <laughs> right? I bet you I threw out a shit ton in my life because I didn't really understand the game. Oh, and I'm not keeping this shit in my car. I have enough trash in my car. I don't need game pieces <laughs> that are never going to match up. Like, I don't know. I'm not. My other sister would be all into that. But she's more anal and she can keep track of things like that. I can't. I would just lose it. I'm just saying I didn't think people... I didn't think the FBI knew as much as they know. And it's a fascinating show. And there's one detective, I can't think of his name, one FBI agent who's like one of my favorite people in the whole world just watching this thing. I just want to go drink it with him. He's so intense and he loves his job. <laughs> he just loves it. He's like, I knew we could do it. I figured it out. We get him for these interviews. And then anyway, something to watch I'll if watch you're, um, we're well, moving on to um, sad times. Former Fret Fort Bragg. This is one of our traders. It's an update. Uh, update. By the way, I don't really venture into politics. I'm not going to, mm-hmm. but I have the right to say this. Mm-hmm. Josh Hawley <laughs> is not <laughs> from Missouri. <laughs> I'm so sick of hearing Missouri Senator Josh Hawley. He's our senator, but he's from Arkansas, and he <laughs> ran up north, and, and he hunkered down. And he doesn't even live there now. He lies and says he has a house in the Ozarks. It's his sister's house. He's full of shit. He lives in Virginia. And he goes, well, I had to live in Virginia because that's what i he, He's one of them people. But anyway, at the hearing, I haven't watched them all. I don't even understand when they're on. It's summertime. Nobody needs hard things. But I did see the clips and laugh my ass off where they show Josh Holly out in front going, yeah, to, to all the little protester people and then as soon as shit gets mildly hairy he is running out and the memes that are so funny hauling ass i mean he's got a bad name <laughs> <laughs> to go with it and then i saw the forest gump one <laughs> they put his head on tom uh, uh tom what's it tom hanks. not hanks they actually just substituted josh's head it's so funny he'll never live that down that's something that yes the news cycles run I say every 10 hours, not even 24, mm-hmm. but that's sticking. Totally. That one, <laughs> you ain't getting away from that. I'm not saying he won't win again, but <laughs> anyway, speaking of the hearings, um, a four of Fra- Fort Bragg soldier who re-enlisted in the Army after attacking the police with chemical spray during the U.S., right, will now serve the longest prison sentence handed down so far from North Carolina for a North Carolina defendant tied to the massive insurrection. He was sentenced to 44 months in prison, plus th- that's a Divide that math. 12 and 12 is 24. Almost. Almost 
Now that's serious. 12 times 4 is 48. Right. Yeah. 12 times 4 is 48. These were not Patriots. <laughs> These were not Patriots, the judge said. Um, no one who broke police lines that day were. They were criminals. A crying, this guy's last name is Malt, formerly of somewhere in New York. Oh, he's up by Rochester. Took responsibility, but he asked for leniencies. So he did apologize. These police officers did not, not deserve what happened to them. I should have known better. As a soldier, I should have known better. Yeah, that's what's even weirder. He said, um, it was all a bit of a fluke. Really? Oh, wow. Well, that's weird. Yeah. Didn't happen to me. He'd been fired from his iron worker's job. He's an Army veteran. Iron worker's job in New York after the January insurrection, Capitol, blah, blah, blah. He was interviewed by the FBI and both denied taking part, but they have proof all over the place. Um, he was being investigated when he was allowed to reenter the Army because he lost his iron worker job, so he re-signed up for the Army. Oh. He thought he was free and clear. They were still spying on him. He was arrested in Fort Bragg after investigators obtained videos of him and his friend. That's the other thing, guys. I mean, these, these capital rioters, I like to call them the yeah. traitors, the ones that went in, not the ones that just went down there to hear Trump talk or whatever. There's protesters, and then there's the ones that went in. Yeah. Way different, because you really crossed the line there. People outside didn't cross the line. Anyway, um, the, they thought they would get away with this. You are on camera everywhere. You're filming yourself. Yeah. I don't I don't know. <laughs> um, around 2 p.m., um, he urged officers in the police line to join the insurrection. He wanted the cops to turn on everybody. Oh Your jobs will be here when you come back after we kick the shit out of everyone. <laughs> this shit is fucking right. What we're doing is right, or there was, wouldn't be this many fucking people here. And you guys fucking know this shit. Yeah. Wow. Well, mm-hmm. Not very well spoken. No. Mm-hmm. <laughs> anyway, he did all kinds of things. He sprayed them with chemical sprays and threw stuff at him and just crazy. So, yeah. you know, it just goes you, though. Just when you think there's no justice, no justice, no cheese. Every time people go, no justice, no peace, I want to go, no justice, no cheese. no cheese. That would be a much bigger threat. Holy shit, they found it. Oh, my God. I got two really good ones. Dang. Ancient fortress found by archaeologists may be a lost royal city. <gasps> Nope. Iraq. What? Yep. A 2,000-year-old fortress built on a mountainside in what's now Iraq, uh, Kurdistan, could be part of a lost royal city called Natunia. With the help of a drone, archaeologists uh, excavated and cataloged the site during a series of digs between 2009 and 2022. Situated in the Zagros Mountains, the stone fortress... uh, That's hard to read. At... Something compromises uh, comprises fortifications nearly 2.5 miles uh, long, uh, two smaller settlements, carved rock, rock reliefs, and a religious complex. The fortress was on the border of um, something, a minor kingdom governed by the kings of local of a local dynasty. These rulers would have paid tribute to the neighboring Parthenon Empire, which extended in parts over Iraq and Mesopotamia approximately 2,000 years ago. Wow. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Carvings at the entrance of the fortress depict a king of a dibin based on the dress of the figure some king i don't know um but it was like a rumored city sort of like their version of atlantis like oz yeah oz if you will (laughs) um it had rare coins so it was rumored and they have found some um it's crazy we'll put it in the schnotes like that's just so cool that in now these days we can still find that stuff. Yeah. I kind of believe in Atlantis. I've never really researched it enough, but I think there could be a city underwater for sure, much the way Miami will be in a hundred years. <laughs> All right, this is really wacko. Yeah. Holy shit, they found it. Mm-hmm. Curators. Discover a rare Chinese magic mirror, only one of three known in the West, in the depths of Cincinnati's Art Museum Whoa, storage. Wait, what? Yeah, I don't even know what a magic mirror is. Oh, but gosh. here's what I got to say to you, Cincinnati. How about you clean your basement up? <laughs> hmm? Shall we have an indoor day? An indoor chore day? 
Let's do indoor chores. I know there's 10,000 pieces down there, but I think we could at least try to catalog them. <laughs> hey, put all the mirror shit over there. This is like undoing a hoarder house. I respect these people. I shouldn't make fun of them, but I mean, it is your basement. Well, here's what it is. Yeah. Curators at Cincinnati Art Museum have figured out that an unassuming bronze disc in the museum's, oh, 100,000 strong collection is actually an exceedingly rare magic mirror. Magic mirrors, also known as transparent or light penetrating mirrors, were first created in China during the Han Dynasty, 202 BCE, 220 CE, according to the museum. When light is projected on them, the mirrors appear transparent and reveal characters or de that decorative design. Oh. That's fantastic. The characters on the museum's polished reflective surface carry six character characters, Chinese symbols, that name Amabatha Buddha while Buddha, while the reflection reveals the image of the Buddha shrouded in heavy, in heavenly beams. Okay, wow, that's cool. Right. The discovery made by Hu Mi Sung, a curator of the East Asian art in spring of 2021, will be presented to the public in the museum's East Wing. I'm totally going. Yeah. I'm going to Cincinnati on July 23rd. Oh, man. Uh-huh. Marking its first return to the gallery since 2019. It's really fate or luck. We were going to put the Browns artwork on view out of curiosity. I wanted to test it. They didn't even know what it was. They were just going to put it out there. Knowledge of another magic mirror. And then what if you're what if you're in there and light penetrates it and you're like, hey, dude, did you know your thing can do that too? Wow, it's not just a pendant. That was weird. Um, we're all curators. Uh, knowledge of another magic mirror inspired Sung to take on the take into to take a conservation expert into museum storage and train a light on Cincinnati's own suspect. Textured light and the reflection encouraged them to try a stronger, more focused beam. Presto, there was Buddha. Yeah. Wow. The mirrors are so complicated to make that scholars are still not exactly sure how craftspeople got it done. But Sung calls the discovery aus uh, auspicious. It's designed to be a blessing, so we do feel very lucky to have it. I bet there's a lot of people in East Asia that are like, yeah, we could get that back from yeah. Cincinnati. Yeah, hmm? yeah. Really? Yeah. The Midwest? Ohio? Oh, uh, that's it. That's awesome. Yeah, pretty cool. All in all. Magic mirror. Magic mirror. I had one of those when I was a kid. It was a Barbie one. I don't think the Barbie one, I'm guessing, <laughs> was not um, not not a replica of that. I loved it. <laughs> all right. I think I have to pull this one up on my phone. Okay. This one just made me laugh. McDonald's and Dairy Queen in Missouri are having a sign war and things are getting <laughs> real messy real fast. Let me see if I can pull it up. Okay. Um, McDonald's and Dairy Queen sign war. I tried to print it out, but you couldn't see it. They're funny. This is, this is where normal people are just as funny as any comedian I've ever met. And then the bank got in on it and they are so <laughs> dorky, but they're funny too. Um, uh, Okay, now I don't know if you're aware of it, but McDonald's, a lot of the time their ice cream machines are broken. And I know this because my mom and dad go every day for the dollar soft serve. Oh, and the delicious. dog gets one too. Oh, okay. Of course. Um, wait, I got to find how this goes. Stay with me. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. Oh. It began simply enough with Marsh, uh, Marshfield McDonald's declaring its intentions on a marquee sign. <laughs> hey, Dairy Queen, do you want to have a sign? War? Dairy Queen shot back. We would, but we're too busy making ice cream. <laughs> oh, this was a not so subtle reference to McDonald's ongoing trouble with its ice cream machines, wow. which are known to break down so often that someone created the Mick Broken website to let customers know which machines in their area aren't working. Yeah. I'm going to have to tell my mom and dad this because yeah, McDonald that. answered, That's cute. Our ice cream makes itself. To which Dairy Queen responded, you mean it actually works? Shocker! Oh, the sign war was on. It was about to ratchet up a notch. McDonald's. This is what they wrote to Dairy Queen. What's a milkman in pantyhose? A Dairy Queen. Oh. 
Oh, oh my God. Wow. Wow. Dairy Queen, why dine with a clown when you can dine with a queen? I like it. I like it. And then um, many local businesses took note and gleefully jumped in. A bank put this on the sidewalk, on the sign out, sidewalk sign outside to its entrance. Roses are red, violets are blue. We want in on the sign war too. A Mexican restaurant post, posted this. Nacho average sign. <laughs> P.S. We have fried ice cream. Oh. oh. <laughs> um, the bank. Though the banks ones are, and then the banks ones were funny. We'll give it in the show notes, but they were like they would include like checking or oh. yeah, I know it was still about it was funny, but it was funny for nerd funny. Nerd funny. Mm-hmm. It just made me laugh. I this is when normal people Twitter everybody thinks so you know everybody can be very funny if they want to. So let me see if I can. I did print some out if I can read them. Um, Where in Missouri? Do you know? Marshfield, Missouri. Um, they have one of a sign war. Wow. Cool. Uh, yeah. What does that say? Oh, some about a Dairy Queen wrote back something. Oh, salty. And then the bank wrote, "Don't be salty. Open our open an account with us." Like they tried. Oh, yeah. yeah. What are you gonna do? We got a lot of smart people in the bank. You got a lot of kids over to Queen McDonald's going, oh my God, I'll tell you what to say to them. What's a milkman? <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, um, this is kind of crazy. Well, I have two crazy ones. Okay. This is not funny, but this is amazing. I don't think I'll ever be going to India in my lifetime. I just don't see it. There's too many other places I I need to go. Yeah. I don't really have the time or the money. I don't blame you. I didn't, I didn't love it. You didn't love it? No. I don't like the food. I don't like the The people climate. seem nice, though. The people are wonderful. I like all my Indian comedian yeah. friends. Um, well, the people are wonderful. The, yeah, it seems crowded. I don't know. I've just never had a desire. I'd rather go to other places. But anyway, if you are going to go to India... Heads up, <clears throat> there's a troop of killer monkeys. What? <laughs> yeah, they're not. They look so cute, too, and they're so you interesting. Go. You know that you could see. You probably <laughs> uh, The Indians know better. A troop of killer monkeys horrifically threw a four-month-old baby to its death after snatching it from its mother. Oh, my God. Snatching him from his mother. It was a baby boy. That's awful. I didn't know... Well, we've talked about that on the show, that they, they do have a vindictive side, and yeah. they... They remember things. They remember when they were stealing people's puppies and yeah. dogs. Well, you th- in the movies, monkeys are nice. I guess I don't know. When you're a kid, they're also in cages. Dad had been sitting up. The dad, I can't say his name. Near Desh is his first name. Near Desh. Okay. Let's just use that. Had been on his three-story roof terrace with his wife and his son when the animals took the tot. The family had been winding, unwinding on Friday night at their home in Borrelia, India, when a gang of monkeys moved onto the roof. Despite their best efforts to drive them away, the animals surrounded the ter- terrified trio and continued to taunt them. Oh my God. The dad made a desperate bid for freedom and ran towards the stair with his four-month-old son, but he slipped through his hands. The dad immediately tried to scoop up the newborn baby into the safety of his arms as the mother watched on in horror, but one of the monkeys beat him to it and mercilessly launched the tot from the three-story roof. Oh. The chilling case shocked parents around the world is despite appearing to be adorable. Exactly. Yeah. The creatures are known to harass, beat, rob, and even kidnap, kidnap humans in broad daylight. How big are these monkeys? We were previously told, not big. They're in the tree. They're tiny. I mean, they look, the, I don't know, the size of maybe. You? No. No. Like a really big cat. <laughs> My a house cat. Not like wow. a tiger. Like okay. just your. Typical little monkey in a tree, a little monkey, not like a chimp or mm-hmm. nothing. Um, we previously told you how another baby boy was killed by a troop of monkeys who tore him from his mom when she was breastfeeding. Um, they made off, that was in a different village. That's awful. Yeah. It's all awful. I don't think um, they teach us how dangerous monkeys are. Whoever no. they is. No. I don't know. Disney, Some, my grade school teachers. It's, yeah. 
Because I would be tempted to walk up like a dumb American, like with a banana, and hand it to him. Not even thinking, this little asshole is going to steal my purse. <laughs> no. Or, yeah, stuff. Steal my stuff. Here's a hopeful story. Hopeful. Man survives 18 hours adrift at sea by clinging to half-inflated lost beach ball. Yep. A tourist named Ivan, 30, survived the ordeal thanks to a lost beach uh, a ball lost by boys on a beach 80 miles away. A man on holiday in Greece miraculously survived. The tourist, uh, he only had that to hang on to. I already read the part. Desperate friends raised the alarm on the Greek with the Grace Coast Guard after they spotted Ivan being pulled out to sea helplessly. After a number of hours pa- passed, he was declared lost at sea. But in a bizarre twist of fate, Ivan was saved when a child's beach ball floated towards him as he feared he might never be rescued. Clinging to the ball allowed him to stay afloat, to remain, to stay afloat. I don't, even, how, I don't even know how long I could have been swimming. How long he, it was, did he wait for the ball? That's what I want to know. Right. How long do you think you could make it if you just laid on your back? The summer, don't forget it. Yeah. Amazingly, the ball had been lost 10 days earlier by brothers Trifon 11 and 6-year-old Thanis. Thanis. The pair had been playing with their favorite ball on the such-and-such beach on the Greek island of Lemnos. Lemnos on June 30th when it was swept away by tides. By astonishing luck, sea currents bought the ball precisely into the path of tourist Ivan, 80 miles away, saving his life. The ball managed to keep him afloat until rescuers finally spotted him. He was plucked from the water after 18 hours of drift, still clutching the ball. By coincidence, the ball's owner and mother spotted her son's toy on Greek, Greek TV and came forward. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. That's pretty cool. Oh, the latest report. So they just showed that his Ivan's friend, Martin Jovansky, who was also swept out to sea, remains missing. Oh. Yeah. I thought it was a total happy story. I hadn't read that last line. It was on the last page. I didn't go that far. You know, I like to scan these, and then I want to surprise myself what I'm reading. I don't want to do that. Let me see how I'm Okay. We're going to spend the rest. Now, next week, we're going to talk about um, minor league baseball just a little. I don't like to go. It's about payment. And I want to tell you a couple stories about minor league because it makes me laugh. But um, tickets? No, 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 no. About how much they get paid. And how much the commissioner makes. It's disgusting. It's revolting. It's worse than comedians uh, when we start. Uh-huh. We at least are guaranteed, um, say, you're going to MC in a comedy club for a week. You know, at, when I started, it was 250 bucks a week. Uh-huh. But they gave you a place to stay, a comedy condo. You had uh-huh. to stay with two other comedians, which is good and bad, depending on how you view that. <laughs> and sometimes it would be a hotel. But you had a place to stay. You got free dinner. Uh-huh. And you got... Um, free drinks, free drinks mm-hmm. guaranteed pay. But when I tell you about what these guys make and stuff, uh, we're going to save that for next week, though. Okay. We're going to close out this week, and if you already know all about it, you can clack out now. No harm, no foul. I will not be offended. But the Alex Murdoch thing, to, to, for those pe- people who, who don't have time to go to the Mandy Matney one, that's the real podcast on this. I'm just doing a poor man's version of catch up. Because it is the most astonishing story, I think, uh, of, of ever, it, of a man happening in real time. Happening in real time. Mm-hmm. And like Mandy, the youngsters are out there beating their brains out to cover it. Yep. And I think it would have gotten all covered up if it wasn't for those, the, as I call them, the children. Um, you know, anybody Probably. under 100 at this point. Um, this... This is the chronology, but it's also where he came from and what he was tied into. And I had, I mean, I know you get the feeling when you're in Charleston and stuff, there's still that good old boy Mm -hmm. club of those people. And I can tell by what they're wearing and, you know, they've been there forever and they're all tied in. And let's have a little more Topo Chico to round this out. (laughs) Topo Chico! Chico! For 87 years, the Murdoch family came... Family name came to represent a legal dynasty in coastal South Carolina where three successive generations controlled the local, local prosecutor's office. So they, they controlled that and their BFFs with all the other judges and prosecutors. And they're all in on it. Like, probably not every single person, but I'd say 80%. Okay. 
but now the family has been closely connected to a bloody tragedy, allegations of embezzlement, and a bizarre murder-for-hire plot to score millions in life insurance. I wouldn't say closely connected. I'd say they did. They're in. They're in. They're in on it. I. You want how you want to div- divvy up these crimes? That's on you. But as family, there's only one person I feel sorry for, and that's the son he didn't shoot. Um, yeah. Mm, the latest, but I don't. That's the kid that I think drove the boat that night and killed those other people and they're bailed. Involved. But I don't know. You're, they was young. They're young. People do stupid shit, but. Whatever. The late people, people died. I know. Yeah. The latest blow to the family's name came this week when Alex Murdaugh, he's the lawyer guy, mm-hmm. was indicted on a charge of murder for the 2021 killings of his wife and his son. I think we mentioned it last week, but I don't even know meth heads that would shoot. The, I mean, I've known meth heads, especially in the Ozarks. Um, they do stupid shit. Like they'll rob a Seven Eleven, or you know, they're. I've never known anyone to kill a relative on purpose to collect life insurance to go get drugs. Especially their child. Well, your own kid. Like, People kill their spouses and ex spouses out of passion and whatever, all that. But your kid, who's an adult child, I mean, it gets to be worse if it was a baby, like a five year old or something. Um, nineteen twenty to two thousand six. This is just going to get you how where they were and how they've gotten there. Okay. Over three generations, uh, the member of the Murdoch family has served in the 14th Circuit Solicitor, which leads pro- prosecutions for all these counties. We don't need to know all this. Um, 2018. So they were the family that did everything in law. That's all okay. you got to know. Okay. Fast forward to 2018. Gloria Statterfield, a housekeeper for the Murdaugh family, dies in what is described as a trip and fall accident at the Murdaugh home, according to attorney Eric Bland, who represents her estate. Satterfield spent more than two decades as a housekeeper. She also served as a nanny, according to the um, according to the guy. After her death, a five hundred thousand dollar wrongful death claim was filed in the Ma- Alex Murdaugh on behalf of her estate. Now, since I listen to Mandy's podcast, I don't mm-hmm. need to read all this, and she dumb she makes it easier. He, we're pretty, we are all, if you listen to it all, pretty sure he killed her. Then filed through all these different ways, the life insurance policies, told her sons, who I think were in another country or somewhere in South America, your mother died, you're going to get this much amount of money. They didn't know the difference. We filed it on your behalf. Yeah, we filed it on your behalf. We're going to, and then they kept a shit ton of it. This is to to go get what, more Vicodin? What is the matter with you? Yeah. I mean, I understand addiction. I get it. But this is like, what a crazy idea. You know what? I'm so Jones in. Uh, I'm going to kill the housekeeper. Yeah. That's what I'm going to do. Like, how about sell 700 or 1,000 bazillion acres you own? Is that, no, ain't going to do that. Right. I'm going to kill some poor housekeeper who's raised my kids. Right. Oh, my God. So 2019, a boat crashes at a bridge near Paris Island in Beaufort County, South Carolina, on February 24th. Oh, so that's the third birthday. Killing a 19-year-old, ki- killing 19-year-old girl, Mallory Beach. Six people were on board of the boat, including Alex Murdaugh's son, Paul. Murdaugh owns the boat. Stone, the solicitor, recuses himself from the seat because of personal connections. Well, the next one's going to have personal connections, right. too. Paul is indicted. On April, on charges of boating under the influence, a BUI, for those of you keeping count, uh, causing great bodily harm and causing death in connection, in connection to the crash, he pleads not guilty. See, Google if Paul is the one he shot. He has two sons. I don't know which one is which. Wait, I can tell you. It's this, he killed this one. Paul. His son is Paul. Summer 2021, Alex Murdoch, 53 years old, calls 911 and reports that he found his wife, known as Maggie, 52, and her son Paul, 22 uh, years old, shot dead outside their home in Island Town, a small community about an hour north of Hilton Head Island. This is all in summer. Uh, then his father dies, Randolph Murdoch, the third. He passes away at age 81 peacefully in his home. That's just a side deal. But I'm surprised he didn't get dad's money. I don't know what happened to that. Um, 
June 15th, the state law enforcement releases basic information about the June 7th killing, saying Alex called 911 at 10 p.m., and investigators collected evidence that night and the next morning. Mm-hmm. Uh, then, I remember this. This was crazy. His brothers, John Marvin Marda and Randy Ru- 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 Rudolph Randy the fourth, mm-hmm. so the third just died, dad died, they went on Good Morning Mer- America to talk about the killings. I remember it, and I thought, holy shit, law number one from a lawyer. Keep yeah. your mouth shut. And you picked Good Morning America. Not even a local channel. Oh, my God. Um, they said that Alex called them that night distraught with the news that his wife and son had been shot, and they do not believe his brother's involved. June 22nd, State Law Division reopens an investigation into the unsolved death of a 19 year, 19-year-old Stephen Smith, whose body was found on the road in 2015 in Hampton County. The agency said it is being reopened the case is being reopened based on information gathered while investigating the deaths of Maggie and Paul Murda. This is how complicated it is. This is why if I was Mandy, I'd have given up. This is why I'm still not a journalist. I majored in journalism. I had a job for a year and a half. I can't. It's hard. It's way too hard. And it's way too, the amount of paperwork you got to go through to get to all this stuff. But anyway, so now they're talking about a kid who was walking on the side of the highway. And they think Paul, the boy who's been shot by his father, also driving the boat the night he the girl was killed, they think he might have had something to do with this guy's dad, this oh kid. Wow. Um, June 25th, Alex and his other son, Buster, Buster is the one that's alive, okay. which is also my sister's dog's name. So <laughs> I find it hard. To, they announced a $100,000 reward for information leading to the conviction of the person or persons responsible for the killing of Maggie and Paul. Now, I remember when they did this too, but there was a deadline. It was, I think it was my birthday. Mm-hmm. It was like September 30th yeah. is the deadline mm-hmm. for you to uh, give us information. Why would you put a deadline on a reward? No. That doesn't even make sense. No. July 22nd, uh, the state law enforcement division it redacted audio of his 911 call the night. In the audio, a distraught Murdoch advises dispatchers that his son and wife have been shot and are on the ground not breathing. Mm-hmm. Then some other guy refuses. He recuses himself from the case. Case September fourth. Okay. <laughs> this is so crazy. <laughs> what this fucking guy? Yeah. Like you're not your normal run of the mill. He's he's even crazier than like a Charles Manson. <laughs> At least Charlie was like, yeah, I'm gonna get a bunch of hot chicks and send them on missions and sit here and smoke dope all day. No, on September fourth. Alex Murdoch calls 911, I remember this, and reports that he was shot early oh, Saturday right. afternoon on a road in Hampton oh. County. Mm-hmm. According to the statement, <laughs> he was taken to a hospital where he was treated for a superficial gun wound to the head. I immediately th- remember thinking, oh, wow, he's going to do the fake somebody yeah. came and shot me in the head shit. So like, <laughs> what? Wow. September 6th. He releases a statement saying he's going to resign from the law firm and he's entering rehab. Now, why do you do that? What do we know, children? What do we know? Everything is shut down. Yeah. Yeah. Popo can't come get you Uh in the rehab. Safe zone. Safe space. (laughs) (laughs) But only for a while. You're just delaying the inevitable. Um, uh, He's going to go to rehab. Uh, Then his lawyer later specifies that his client has an opioid addiction. And that can be I've had friends that were addicted to opioids, especially after surgeries and shit. Yeah. They never shot their kid. No. <laughs> September 7th, wow. the law firm says Murdoch resigned after the discovery by Pimped that Alex misappropriated funds in violation of Pimp. P- oh, not Pimped. It looked like that. It's P-M-P-E-D. I don't know what. Standards and practices. He stole a bunch of money from his own law firm. This is disappointing news for all of us. Rest assured, our firm will deal with it in a straightforward manner. There's no place for our, in our firm for such behavior. How would you all not know that? Right. Who's your accountant? <laughs> September 8th, Supreme Court of South Carolina issues an order suspending his license to practice law. Well, I'm glad we all got on top of that. <laughs> um, 
September 10th, a family spokesperson says that Alex Murdoch's shooting indicates that the, the injury was much more serious than a superficial wound. Well, how would we know? Because he took him, he was smart enough. Well, he's not smart at all, no. but in, he knows details of law. Then when he got to the hospital, he said, I want to go to rehab. Right. 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 Alex had pulled over. This is what led up to the thing. After seeing a low tire indicator, a male driver in a blue pickup asked if he had car troubles. Al, and, and as soon as Alex replied, he was shot. Now, why would anyone do that? You got to think of, like, what is the motivation? <laughs> Let's say I see a guy that's pulled over. You know what? I'm going to rock up and shoot that guy. Yeah. For what? His wallet? <laughs> and then this person didn't even take anything. Oh, my God. Wow. <sighs> Uh, court documents reveal this is September 14th. Alex Murdoch arranged for a former client to kill him so that his surviving son could collect a life insurance policy of about $10 million. You didn't really want him to kill you, sir. No. We all know that. No, you had some Curtis yeah. Edward Smith, 61 years old, who allegedly shot him, was charged with assisted suicide, assault, and battery of, of high and aggravated nature, pointing and presenting a firearm insurance fraud and conspiracy to commit insurance fraud, according to the state. I feel a little bit sorry for Curtis because when you read, I'm not going to go into it, but Curtis has not led a stellar life, let's say, but he's tried and he gets back on his feet and then he does something dumb again and all that. But I think he thought, I'm sure he heard, he said he'd give me 10 grand if I come out there and just kind of shoot him kind of in the head. A little bit. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to shoot you a tiny bit. Tiny. September 16th, Murdo was arrested in connection to the insurance fraud scheme that the court documents say he was involved uh, for killing his own son so he could collect the insurance payout. He was charged with insurance fraud, conspiracy to commit insurance fraud, and a filing a false report, police report. Um, so then, then, let's go back. Not in time. In incidents, September 22nd, the sur a survivor of the 2019 boat crash, it was at night, too, and they were back in those South Carolina inlets. And a bunch of people got thrown from the boat because he hit a pier going like 60 fucking miles an hour. Mm -hmm. Oh, my first thought is, alligators! <laughs> oh, my God! If I was one of the lucky ones that didn't die, now I'm swimming in a swamp. Because once you get back in those inlets and the marsh areas, ugh, cottonmouth snakes. Ugh. A survivor of the boat crash files a lawsuit against the former attorney, claiming Murdoch attempted to orchestrate a campaign to falsely blame Connor Cook for the boating crash. He did. They tried to blame it on another kid, saying his kid wasn't driving. Right. So they take the kid with the least amount of power and money mm -hmm. and blame it on that kid. He should have been aware that his, under, his uh, underage son, Paul, had alcohol issues. He should not have been allowed to use the boat. It was also, you know, so many things are wrong with this. They stopped in a town. They got out. They got drinks. Then they get back in the boat. But it's pitch black out there. They were doing shots at the bar, yeah. That's another thing they forget. There's cameras everywhere of what you've been doing all night. Right. You're hammered. Um, September 28th, the children of the um, the maid, the housekeeper, mm -hmm. uh, they filed suit against him, saying that he embezzled from her estate. Um, keep going. I mean, there's so many things against this guy. I'm shocked he hasn't killed himself in prison. But maybe they got him on suicide super watch. Because, yeah. oh, I watched The House of Maxwell. That's right. Oh, yeah, but I forgot what that's on. Um, but J Jelaine. No, 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 it's on uh, Amazon. Amazon? On that was really good. It's only three episodes. But if, you, if you've never seen her father, he was the original Trump. Everything about the guy. Like, he was popular. He'd do crazy things. And then he had money. And then he didn't have money. But anyway, uh, I don't even know why I went off on that, but. Suicide Watch. Mm -hmm. Jeffrey, they're mad. The family in one point in this show is really mad that Jelene has to be in shackles. Well, look what Jeffrey Epstein did when we weren't, or whatever happened to right. Jeffrey, but Allegedly. let's say it really was truly suicide. Mm -hmm. That wouldn't happen if he was shackled. Right. Right. You should shackle Alex. Because he, he owes too many explanations. If you're ever going to get him, you should at least try, though. Um... They ordered him into a psych ward. Like, that doesn't even matter. Um, keep going. Now we're in November. I mean, I'm going to blow through some of this because I'm going to blow too. Um, January 2021. 
2022, January 21st of 2022. He's charged with 23 more crimes in four new indictments returned by the grand jury. He stole more than $2.2 million from four clients. Um, he's killed his wife, his housekeeper, and his son. He stole from his own firm. And, and these idiot brothers go on Good Morning America yeah. to defend him? He tried to blame another kid instead of his own kid for the de- accidental death of that lady, the girl. Um, wow. He was in on it with another guy, how they were scamming the money out of the um, insurance company. You got to listen to Mandy's thing to understand it. it. It's very difficult. She dumbs it down in a great way where you can understand it, but... Um, he was also indicted on four counts of money laundering, uh, forgery, and three other drug offenses, including allegedly trafficking over 10 grams of methamphetamine. Wow. This is the last update of, of this article, and then I'll be done. Some people, I think, will be into this. Other people will be like, yada, yada, blah, blah, blah. Hey, July 14th, Alex Murdaugh is indicted on two counts of murder and two counts of possession of a weapon during the commission of a violent crime in connection with the 2021 killing of his wife and son by a Colleton Grant County Grand Jury, including, according to South Carolina Attorney General Alan Wilson and South Carolina Law Enforcement Division Chief Mark Keel. I mean, it took that long because I think he had too many people in places of power. How many judges have had to recuse themselves from this whole goddamn mess because they're all tied into one another? Yeah. 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 But what kind of cray-cray... First, you whack the housekeeper. Eh, nobody will know. <laughs> Come on. We can get another Stop. nanny. Um, and then you kill your wife and your own son. It's like, I mean, there's not enough episodes on Lifetime to cover this. I don't know how we're going to have to cover it when it comes down to that. Um, all right, termites. I'm going to be headed to Las Vegas, August 5th. I'm so excited about my Canadian Niagara Falls um, Falls View Casino gig, mm-hmm. and I've already talked to the people up there running the joint. And they're so nice. Lewis is, was up there, took yeah. pictures from his room. You can see the falls, and I'm going to go on the Canadian side in the boat, mm-hmm. like a five hour ordeal. You're and I think I end up at a winery. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) I've been down there once. I was in Niagara Falls once. And guess whose boat I was in? Downtown Julie Brown. No. Yes. Oh, cool. It was a charity golf tournament for Jim Kelly of the Buffalo Bills, and I was really probably only 23 years old, and that's when Trump was there. Donald was there. He was weird then. This is why it was weird. So it's a charity softball game. We're all given a short sleeve like softball shirt, baseball mm-hmm. shirt, whatever. Your name's on the back. Mm-hmm. And we're told to wear shorts and come play softball. Yep. Everybody, every single, like Fabio was there. <laughs> like I was just the MC. I was not considered a celebrity. I had to MC the night and the, the functions and the events. And I said, fine, I'll do it. Yeah. Sounded fun. And I didn't have nothing to do that weekend. And um, I could took a picture with Fabio for my mom. She was so excited. And then I was like, who's this guy? Like, at the time, Donald Trump was just the the guy from New York that was a realtor. Him and Ivanka were, were always Ivana, whatever. I can't give their names straight. The he's mom a, he's a was Ivana. He was a, he was a real estate magnet. Yeah. Um, but I, he wasn't, like, I don't know, maybe kind of, like, Letterman would do jokes about him and yeah. shit like that. He but I didn't. Famous, famous, yeah. Uh-uh. Yeah. He wasn't famous, famous guy. He was semi. New York, he was very famous. Because Lewis said, we couldn't believe he had to hear about him every day of his life. And well, it was New York Post and whatever. Um, Donald showed up in pants, slacks. It was about 102 degrees in Buffalo that day. <laughs> and he had a turtleneck on under the button thing we were given. And I was like, they go, I go, is that that Trump guy? And they're like, yeah, he's not going to play. He's going to manage our team. I go, really? Well, we lost by like a million. So I'm just saying. But then he had his own personal photographer there. And the guy came up to me and said, um, Mr. Trump would like to get his picture with you. I go, oh, dude, I'm not famous. I go, you don't, you don't need my picture. 
Because I really thought, maybe he thinks I'm somebody else, or why would he want his picture taken with me? And the guy goes, no, he gets a picture with everyone. I go, oh my God. okay. So I did it. I still have the picture. <laughs> when, when I sent it to my mom, a hard copy of it. She had one somewhere. I think it's still somewhere in the TV, but I go, darling, what if he wins the election? I have a picture with a president in a softball outfit and my 80s perm and my sunglasses. Um, uh, so I, I don't remember if it was Bobby or somebody was like, he takes pictures with everyone in case someone becomes famous later. Are you kidding? I'm like, wow, he's hedging his bets. Um, I'm not sure I would have wasted film on me. I mean, I might be a famous comedian someday, but I'm not going to be anybody you're going to care to put on your wall, I would doubt. Um, anyway, I don't even know why I went off on that tangent, but that's it. I'm going because I'm going to. Um, and I've only been to Niagara Falls one time in my life, and that was the time. On a boat with um, the people from the charity tournament. Fabio was not on my boat. I was very sad. I couldn't oh. stop looking at him. Like, I'm sure he was cool. It was just an anomaly. It's like, are you really a person? Yeah, he's like a couple of mm-hmm. Anywho. All right, tournaments. And then I'll see you in the fall. And boy, are we cooking up some good stuff. We're already yeah. into 2023. Just going to say, keep your eye out for me in Florida in January. Yeah. <laughs> I can't announce any of these things because they're not on sale yet, but I really like the way the schedule's coming. Mm-hmm. A little bit of golf. Yeah, well, just not to be in the super cold would be nice. Yeah. I was so sick of my coat by the end of last year, the whole tour at the end of that. I was like, I don't ever want to see this coat again. <laughs> and it's my favorite coat. I'll be happy to see it again, but not for a while. So that's it, Termites. You can go on my website and see where I'm going to be in the fall. I can't tell you yet where I'm going to be in 2023, but soon enough. And... um for those of you wondering why I'm not haven't been on Sirius lately, or Pandora, or Spotify, don't worry, I'm trying to fix that. That's all I'll say about that. I will be sweet. I will be kind. I will keep my mouth shut. Uh-huh. Yep. But I'm gonna fix it. Promise. Uh, let's call it a glitch. Uh-huh. That's it, termites. All right, stay cool. All of us in the hundred degree heat and stuff. Don't forget about your pets. Fresh water. Uh-huh. I gave all the cats ice water. They've never seen water. I just put like a shit ton of ice in it. They're so weird. They're like, meow, meow. Like, oh, they didn't. that's not really what you wanted? I'm sorry. I added ice to your water <laughs> to make it even more delicious. Meow, 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 meow. No, that's baby cat's meow. Meow, meow. <laughs> they all have a different cry. I can tell who's talking and who's not talking. Wow, you're a cat lady. Uh, well, you know what? I didn't go get cats. They showed up. And I tried. I called five places. If I can catch them, will you take them? Ma'am, there's over 87,000 feral cats in this county. You think we care about four more? I was like, fuck, sorry I'm called. Sorry. Said cat rescue or whatever they went as whatever. I called five. Nobody wanted them, so they're here. One has indoor privileges. Everyone else has porch privilege. <laughs> Even my brother's like, you can't let four cats inside. They'll dominate that house. I'm like, yeah, they fucking will. I know. <laughs> they are very well taken care of. They are very well fed. And they have all the shelter they need. So you know what? They should be lucky they were born under this air conditioning vent and not out in those terrible woods where someone would have eaten them. Right. Yeah. They got to they pass. Yeah. All right, termites. Stay cool. Be good summer termites. And uh, that's it.